All right, uh, quick uh, opening thoughts. First of all, I, I think the, from my perspective and um, talking to our staff um, after the spring game, we accomplished what we wanted, and that was to try to create uh, as much as possible uh, game-like situation. I wanted to see how our guys reacted to uh, a game-like atmosphere. Uh, I thought our defense started out with the right mindset. Uh, they came out uh, with good energy. I did not think our offense did. Um, we had to um, get them thinking right at halftime, and, and you saw the result of that. I thought they came out in the second half with a, you know, a better mindset. So, you know, those are important things, right? You want to get those uh, accomplished uh, in this kind of scenario. I don't want to do that uh, in the opener. Um, so from that perspective, um, you know, mission accomplished in trying to create this game more than just a, a practice. Uh, too many penalties, uh, things we've got to clean up from that perspective. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, by and large, there was, you know, a lot of plays out there that, uh, you know, can be, for us, evaluated that gives us an opportunity now to know our our strengths and weaknesses. So when you step back and look at it, um, I feel really good about um, where we are um, in our evaluation process moving forward, and that's what you want, um, you know, going through the spring. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Yeah, so when we came, you know, in here, um, I think we all knew that one of the areas that was a must was that if you're going to have any success, you, you have to strengthen the offensive line here. And so um, it's been a point of emphasis, and, and we've got to run the football. Uh, if you're going to win the SEC West, uh, you have to be able to um, – you've got to be able to run the football. And today's not – you know, we're not here to <laughs> bang the drum and say we've arrived, but there had to be some semblance of uh, we've made progress in that end, and, and I think we can say that we did, uh, and we emphasized it, and now we can go and look at all right, what are the things that we do well and what do we need to do better. And, and so I think that that's the exam, right? Um, what did we learn from the spring? Um, what did we do well? And, and what can we do better? Yeah, Brian, right here. How did you change the offensive mindset at halftime? Because I think it was five sacks, the first five series, and just looked kind of sluggish. What did you, how did you change that mindset? Because you came out on fire in the second half. You know, I just don't think our guys were thinking the right way. I mean, um, you know, they, they – um, they need to be educated. They need to be talked to. They, they need to think the right way. And quite frankly, I think, um, you know, maybe it, it was a little bit of not probably doing that the right way before we started the game uh, and getting them to think the right way. So a little bit on, on the coaches and, and maybe a little bit on the players and, and not getting them to think the right way coming into this, you know, uh, situation. Hey, Coach, do, do you think the struggles of getting stops in the second half uh, was due to your guys getting fatigued, possibly? Oh, no doubt. All of that has something to do with it. And look, let's, let's be clear. Um, how many coverages did you see today? One. <laughs> you know, we had one coverage. We probably played two different fronts. So, you know, we lined up very basic today. Uh, and so by the second half, um, you know, the fits were easier. The line was very comfortable. There was no movement up front. Um, you kind of can get my drift here. So by that time, we better have some movement up front. Uh, coach, right here in the middle, uh, Shay Dixon with 24-7. Um, how do you balance Nussmeyer being a young guy and, you know, you want him to maybe correct things in his game as he grows with being a talented quarterback and going out there and, you know, throwing well? Don't overcoach it. I mean, you can get – you know, it can be, you know, paralysis by analysis, right? You know, you, you, 
you start to overcoach that, and then he starts to pull back a little bit, and then you lose a really good quarterback too. So you've got to be careful there. Um, I think you just you, you know you try to coach him uh, on the things that matter the most, and that is taking great care of the football. I mean, he's going to make some mistakes. You know, I make mistakes. You know, I know you don't. I mean, but everybody else does. Um, but and I don't mean that in any other way. I'm just making the point that. He's going to make mistakes, you know, and so it's just one of those things that I think you got to be careful with a guy like that that's really talented, that you don't try to overcoach that um, and make sure he takes care of the football. If he does that, you know, if he makes a mistake here or there with the talent that he has, just go play football. Uh, Brian, uh, taking uh, obviously we, we look at today's snapshot, but you're looking at the whole – Spring from the start where you started to today, how how good or or how do you feel about your ability to field a competitive team in the fall? You know how close are you? How how far do you have to go? Well, it's a, it's going to be a competitive football team. Um, we have some holes, and and those holes need to be addressed and need to continue to work on. I'll I'll get a deeper dive on this over the next couple of days. I always try to get through the spring and know my weaknesses. Um, because I don't want any surprises as I go into camp. Um, look, if I, if I, you know, started to look at them right now, those backs run really hard. You better tackle them. Um, you better get our backs on the ground. And you saw that today. They can catch the ball, come out of the backfield. Um, you know, we'll continue to work on some things that are, you know, in my eye, some weaknesses. Um, but, they bring some traits uh, across the board that I think are highly competitive in this league. The receivers, um, they can go get the football. We need to be a little bit mentally tougher, play in and play out. Um, but they can compete at a high level. I like Kobe Taylor today. I mean, I, I thought he showed himself more than just, you know, a pedestrian uh, player. Um, he's long. Um, he showed um, some yardage after the catch. Um, we need to. He needs to live, if possible, in the weight room with us. Uh, and if he does that, you know, with Mashburn, you know, may, maybe we got something there. So that's an upgrade for us. Um, the O line gets better. Um, Campbell was really good today. Um, you know, I thought Turner was consistent. We had the one, you know, uh, situation with a with an illegal snap, but um, by and large, I, I thought the offensive line got better as as the the you know the game went on. And you know, the one thing that y'all want to know about is, you know, we didn't clear up anything with the quarterback today. We probably made it even more difficult. Um, you know, I mean, Brennan was good today, right? I mean, he. He, he does really good things with the football. Um, he knows the offense. He's smart. Um, he takes care of it. Uh, Nussmeyer, we talked about Nussmeyer's athletic ability, his arm strength. Um, Daniels is really, really fast, and Walker's got one of the strongest arms on the team. So I don't know if we cleared up anything there, and we know defensively that front is really, really good. The safety's tackled so much better today. So... That's kind of a synopsis. Are we done? That was pretty good, wasn't it? I don't know how many wins that equals, um, but that makes us more competitive. Uh, Coach, uh, in terms of the passing game, uh, Jack Fish, how big is he going to be involved? Or how do you feel like he's going to be involved? In the you know, he's deceptive, right? I mean, you guys were here. I mean, I, I'm seeing him, like, for the first time, you know, this spring. He's – you know, deceptive in a sense that he uses his body well, he positions himself well, he's a, and you know, he plays better than sometimes he practices. Like, he's a gamer, you know. I mean, I guess you guys, you, you, you're used to seeing him play last year. He just, when it's time to play and the lights go on, you can count on he's going to make some plays, and we saw that today. Coach Kelly right here in the middle. G Sports Media. Um, what's the point of emphasis going into the offseason of, as far as the return game, you know, having that ability to be able to flip the field position, you know, when you get into the first game of the season in the Superdome? 
Well, I mean, we really hadn't spent any time on it, right? So it's been all punt um, and protection, and you know we've got a, we've got you know competition coming in at the punting position um, to flip you know field position there. You know, Jay Bramlett comes in and he'll compete at that position. Um, you know, we we've got skilled players you know that can return. You saw some of those runners today; they run hard. So if we do a good job and really commit ourselves to to that end, you know, we should be, you know, really good special teams. Brian Polian does a heck of a job. That's why he's here. Uh, I think I think we can – that can be a, a strength of ours moving forward. Hey, Brian. Uh, yes. Garland Gillen, uh, Fox 8 New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, you, we see it all spring. We got to see it in the spring game with John Emery Jr. Is the sky the limit for this kid in the, in the fall? Because when he came out of Destrehan, he was highly recruited, and he's kind of had some downspurts, obviously, with academic problems last yeah. year. Yeah. But it seems like everything's going in his direction going into this fall. I was really impressed with him today. Uh, you know, he was probably, uh, you know, I don't want to give you an exact percentage because I'm not sure, but he was less than healthy. You know, I mean, most would have said, why would you play him today? But he wanted to go, I mean, because, you know, he's he was like, look, I'm going to get banged up during the season. I want to know what it's like not to play 100% because I'm not going to be 100%. And um, so just kind of that kind of mindset, you know, says a little bit about him. And he wanted to get out there. And, um, you know, I was, I was proud of him. You know, he, he fought through, you know, not being 100%. And we saw what kind of back he is, even banged up. All right, Coach, has time for two more. we got Ed and then John. Coach, in, in all the time that you've been doing this, have you ever played two guys before? And if it was, like, super close, oh. would you consider doing that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> nightmares, nightmares. Um, I've played two. Yes, uh, I think I think LSU uh, when I was at Notre Dame in in the uh, Music City Bowl, I played two. Um, it's not easy. I mean, I, it's not easy. I mean, it 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 has to be a situation where. You know, you have to do it. I'd much rather just play one quarterback and, and you know, try to fit the offense to their traits, you know, over somebody else. The two-quarterback situation is so difficult uh, to manage, honestly. Hey, Coach, here in the back. Um, can you talk about Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, all these guys coming here this weekend, getting them involved in the weekend, and um, just how have you gotten to know them? Yeah, I'm a little salty about the whole thing. Um, Joe Burrow, you know, when I was in Cincinnati, I had a petite filet named after me at Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. He's got, like, this massive steak with crab etouffee on it. Like, really? I mean, oh, that's right. He won a national championship here, didn't he? Um, no, we were kind of kidding back and forth. There's a steakhouse, Jeff Ruby's, in Cincinnati, and I was uh, envious of the steak that's named after him. We had a great time and got a chance to talk a little bit about, um, you know, just his time here, right, and, and how much it meant to him. And being a guy from the Midwest and certainly having spent time in the Midwest, how much that transition for me and him, uh, there's some similar paths. And, you know, we're kind of sharing the same experience, how much we both have enjoyed it. Um, so it was really Really good um, to have that conversation with him. And, and then Jamar is just su such a nice young man. Um, you can see how, um, you know, he was uh, embraced here, uh, both of them. So it, it was nice to connect this week. You know, I did a couple of Elk Club events and to see our alums back in town, hundreds of alums. It's nice to see that bridge um, that, that has our alumni coming back to town and, and being part of LSU and LSU football. Thank you. Appreciate it.